Praise the Lord. My name is David Olubukola Ajide. David Olubukola Ajide. And I just want to welcome you this morning to Better Life for City People. So listen to me. You did not just tune to this station by chance. It's because God has packaged something great for you. Your life will never be the same again. There's a word from the Lord for you this morning. Just stay tuned. Listen, God is going to speak to you and your life will never be the same again. I trust God for a great morning for you today. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned and God bless you. Overwhelm me with your love Your mercy and grace Overtake me Overtake my heart and mind Exceed my imagination Overwhelm, overwhelm me, Whoa. overwhelm me with your love, your mercy and grace, mercy and grace. overtake me, overtake me, Whoa. overtake my heart and Sing more than we, more than we could ever ask or think. Sing Lord, overflow, 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 overflow. overflow. Ladies and gentlemen, because the woman of God was believing God, it is very, very abnormal. Everybody say abnormal. It's very abnormal for a princess, a princess that is not married, beautiful princess, to leave the palace where there's all comfort and everything, and say she's coming to take a bath, a morning bath, in where? At the riverside. It's abnormal. But you see, when God wants to do something, things that are abnormal will work in your favor. Somebody will not have rest until they come and bless you. I declare somebody will not have rest. Your covenant helper will not have rest until he looks for you and bless you. Ah, this woman, the, the, the princess was abnormal. A princess would have stayed in her house and take a bath. But she woke up one day, she couldn't sleep and say, okay, this morning, I'm just going to go to the Nile and take a bath. So she went to the Nile to take, she was going to the Nile to take a bath. Because God is causing something to happen on behalf of a woman that is praying in the house. And she stood. And that's why she was coming. Immediately they were coming. You know, God ordered their footsteps to exactly to where the baby was. Nile is a big river. If you see it. If you go to Egypt, you see it. Long. But she went to the place because somebody somewhere was believing God. How many of us want to believe God here this morning? I want to tell you that when you believe, things will happen on your behalf. I mean, God will orchestrate kings to look for you. Presidents will look for you. Ah, governors will look for you. Because God will cause something new to happen for you. And this woman stood as she, as she was coming. Immediately Miriam saw her coming. Miriam said, oh, you don't finish. You do. <laughs> she said, eh? And then they got closer. You know, they got closer. He said, that baby, instead of that baby to keep quiet, the baby started crying. Oh, oh. We didn't say, yeah, I'm in trouble. She ran. Because if they catch her with the baby, they will not only kill the baby, she also was. Maybe be killed or be put in jail. So she ran, she left the baby to her face. But God will never leave you. God was the baby. There are two things that could have happened. The woman could have cried and said, hey, hey, hey. this one of the stupid Egyptian Israelite son. Today, today, kill the boy. Throw the boy in the line. Bounce. But she didn't do that. The other one is to carry him. Obviously she carried him and there was what? Compassion. Because one woman at home was believing God. 
Because one woman was standing in faith. One woman was declaring that God will cause something to happen. I declare this year, something good will happen on your behalf in Jesus' name. So she took, see, she took the baby and when she, she the baby wept and she had compassion on him. Somebody here will receive compassion. <laughs> your product will have compassion. That's your project will have compassion. That's your thing that you have sent will have compassion. From the list of other source, help is going to come to you in the name of Jesus. She took compassion on him. And the Bible says when she saw him, she had compassion. She said, oh my goodness, this is one of the Hebrew boys. Oh, I love this baby. This is a cute baby. Because God covered and put favor. You will see favor in Jesus' name. You know, when God put favor, nobody can stop you. And then when Miriam, told, Miriam was expecting them to have thrown the baby, child, like, both. And then when Miriam now turned back, I said, eh, what's happening? She's dancing the baby. She's dancing with the baby. Ebo mojo, eba mijo. Miriam said, eh, this is God. And then she, God called to us. I ran back. I said, eh, 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 excuse me, madam. Eh, is this your baby? I said, no, I've just found this baby. Then say, can I get you? Then she got more courage. Say, so beautiful. Yes, so beautiful child. Oh, I just love this baby. I want to keep this baby. Ah! Then she realized, you can't take that baby to the palace. Because if the father saw the baby, father what? Will kill the baby. So what do I do? And she can't give the baby to the Egyptians. Because if the Egyptians see the baby, they will kill. It's a law. They've made a law. Listen. But you see, the, the law of God. Faith will break through any law in the name of Jesus. Faith is when the blessing is working. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no human law can stop the power of the blessing over your life. There was a law in Egypt, so she now thought to herself, and then Miriam said, I have a suggestion, man. She says, what is it? Can I get you a nurse? A nurse that can keep this baby for you, and nothing will happen. And the woman said, what a wonderful idea. Because that thing was backed by heaven. Because the blessing was working. When the blessing is working, foolish ideas will become wonderful ideas. Ideas that nobody will ever accept, they will accept it. He says, he didn't know this girl from Adam, but he came and suggested a nurse. And she accepted. Somebody you didn't know will show you favor. They will just look at you and then they will like you. They will look at you and they will bless you. Miriam ran home and called the mother. And what do you think the mother was doing? What do you think she was? She was praying. She says, Mama, come, come, come. You want to say, no, have they killed the child? No, they didn't. She says, yeah, they didn't kill the child. The princess wants to see you. She wanted to see you. And then she went, and then she came. And then the princess stood her, look, this is my son. He didn't know who owned the son. But I said, this is my new son. Can you nurse this baby for me? And the man said, yes, I can nurse the baby for you. He says, and I will pay you to nurse your own baby. She says, I will pay you to nurse your own baby. Ladies and gentlemen, the blessing will change your situation forever. You see, God will cause something. The power of the blessing will cause things to fall, even in recession for you in the name of Jesus. Let me see quickly end with this. Five things that happened to this woman. Five things. You see the power of the blessing. What the blessing did to her. Because she puts, puts her faith in the blessing. The first thing is that everybody lost their son. She didn't lose their own. I've come to declare to you, it may happen to everybody, but it will not happen to you. Amen. Every family may go into recession, but you're not going to recession. Bible says, in the time of famine, you shall know what? Plenty. The, the blessing will bring that to your life. Everybody lost their son, but she didn't lose their own. Number two, look. <laughs> Number two thing is, listen. That day, that day, that moment, her status changed. She was no longer a slave. She became a free woman. Why? Nobody, it's, it's impossible to be free. But well, ladies and gentlemen, listen, this woman used her faith and the blessing took her from a slave to become what? A free woman. What it means is that when in the morning when they are driving them, go and bring that, go and, go and, oh, go and build it. She doesn't have to go, she just stay at home. Isn't that wonderful? As status, you see, your ble the blessing can change your status in any sphere. It doesn't matter which country you are, anywhere you are, no matter what it has been, it can take you from being a slave to a higher status. Are you listening to me? Number three, that woman was being paid. Now, she, not, she was not only, she not become a free woman. Several free people are looking for work. Now she got work. Now she's being paid to take care of her own what? A child. How many of you women would like to be paid for taking care of your child? Not just ordinary money from the princess. Being paid for taking care of what? Of your child. Now everybody is going to work. She sits at home. And her job is what? To take care of what? Of a child. 
That is the power of what? Of the blessing. While every other woman is struggling, she's been paid to take care of her child. Now listen, the pay to take care of her child is not only. Food was always supplied so that the child will be well fed from the palace. Food was supplied from the palace. Ladies and gentlemen, you see the blessing will change your story. Because she believed through the faith connection, the blessing took her from ordinary person. Listen, number four, she became not an ordinary person, she became a VIP. Everybody say VIP. Let me tell you how that happened to her. Because you see, now she, she's the only Hebrew woman that can visit the palace anytime she wants. When the princess friends, children are doing birthdays, you know they do birthday. The first birthday that was celebrated was already where? In Egypt. So Egypt does birthday. Are you following me? When they are doing party in the palace, she attends with the son, with her son, who is the son of the princess. So she mingles with the who is who in Egypt. I mean, she became a VIP person. They say, here comes, the, here comes the son of the princess and the nurse of the princess. So she goes to free parties with the big stuffs. I mean, that's the power of the blessing. The blessing can change your story. Anytime somebody is doing something there, you see her there, walking with them. Walking and doing things with them. Because she became a VIP. Let me go one step further. Do you know that she also became rich? Remember that story? She became rich through the blessing. I shared a story with you some times ago of the man. Money is just an idea. People think, oh, I must get money to make money. No. Money is an idea. God will give you an idea. If you follow up the idea, through that idea, you become rich. And there was a story of a man, and, and uh, a, a very poor man. He was a very poor man. And then he began to pray, God, show me what to do. God, show me what to do. And they went, God, one day God gave him an idea. So in the morning, he went to the king. All the service he had was very small money. He went to the king. He said, oh, king, please, I need you, I, I need you to do something for me. He said, what do you want to say? I just want to give you this money. This is my money. This is all I have. I want to give it to you. The king said, you a poor man. Why would you give me this little money? I don't need it. Keep your money. He said to the king, he says, king, please take that money. The king says, no, no, no. I don't want your money. He says, please, king, I beg you. You are denying me. All you can do is just take this money. I said, okay. So what do you want? He said, I'm just having one request. He said, what is the request? You know, next week is the Yam Festival. During the Yam Festival, all you need to do, I want to just come and whisper in your ears. When they are doing the Yam dance. Say, King, let me whisper in your ears. And then that is all. He said, ah, ah, ah. That's a simple thing. During your festival, come and whisper in what? In my ears. So the king took the money, put it in pocket. The day of your festival, everybody was there. All these chiefs, everybody were there. They were beating drum and dancing. Everybody. They were... And then the king's horse appeared. He rode the horse. Boom, boom, boom. As the king was getting down from the horse. Everybody was looking at the king. They said, they were doing Ebila, Ebila, Ebila. Move away. You know, all sorts of things. And... The king was walking majestically. And as he was about to sit on the throne, this man said, I wanted to come. The king said, no, you can't go. They were blocking him, saying, excuse me, I need to talk to the king. Excuse me, he said, no, who are you? They wanted to beat him. And then he was calling and said, the king is my friend. I need to talk to the king. The king is my friend. And he began to argue. And the king looked back and said, what's this, what's, what's this problem? And then as the king wanted to go, then he kissed his face. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is that man, that poor man. Oh, he said, oh, sorry. Let him come. He's my friend. Come, 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 come. So as he was saying, he said, the king said, oh, king. The king said, what is it? A stress, 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 stress. The king said, hey, hey, hey. Said, oh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so. And then the king left. And then he went back. Everybody was looking at him. They made way for him. He went back to sit down. When the king, after the festival was going, the king was going, going to go again. He said, I need to say something to the king. Everybody said, ah. and then, as he was struggling again, this time there was no so much opposition. They allowed him. And then, as the king was going to all the horses, oh, king, ah, stress, 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 stress. The king said, ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. I said, bye bye. So they said, bye bye bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, few days after, next morning, early in the morning, next morning, before he woke up, he had a knock on his door. Go, 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 go. About three or four people were gathered there. They said, ah, he said, ah, good morning. What can I do for you? Ah. He said, okay, oh, <laughs> we didn't know you're that close to the king, go. You are so surprised yesterday how the king honored you. You are speaking so much to the king. He said, oh, he said, oh, the king is my friend. We are very good friends. He said, ah, hey, really? He says, we have been having problems with our land in this area. And we needed somebody to talk intimately to the king for us. He said, can you please help us talk to the king? I said, oh, I can do that. I can talk to the king for you. But you know, you don't go to the king empty-handed. So what did you bring for the king? 
And then say, ah, we know, we know. So this is what we brought some yam and this for the king. Say, okay, what did you bring for the man who will be talking to the king on your behalf? And they say, eh, yes, we, we talked about that. Also. So they brought some yam and other things to the man who will be talking to the king on what? On his behalf. And so he collected that. Took the king's on one side. Before he did, another afternoon, another people came. Another people came and said, so what did you bring for the king? Say, we brought this. So what did you bring for the man who will be talking to the king on who? On your behalf. He said, okay, you see this land we are talking about. If the king help us, we will give you three or four plots. You know, it's plenty. You just take three pluses. You are talking to the king on what? On our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, the man very soon became what? Wealthy and rich. This woman, this woman, Jacob, that's where we are going. Hand and hair to what? To the princess of what? Of the land. And when people want to see the princess and the king, they come to see her. And then when they bring something for the princess, they also bring to someone who will become, who will be talking to the princess who? On their what? On their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, the blessing made her rich. She became wealthy. The power of the blessing. Everybody said the power of the blessing. She became wealthy. Finally, through her, the deliverer came. Hallelujah. Because she was the only woman God can trust. She was the only woman in the state who could believe. Listen, while every other person was still a slave, did you know she was no longer a slave? She was working. She was being paid. She was doing well. And the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and had no sorrow to eat was manifesting where? In our life. The blessing will take you to the top. The blessing will work for you this year. You are going places. You are going places. You are going higher. God can only trust her to raise his deliverer. I got a word for somebody here. Don't throw your dream into denial. Hallelujah. Just because it's not happening or because it's difficult. Devil, devil is putting word for you, putting prayer on you. That thing cannot work. Go and throw it to the night. Kill the dream. Kill the dream. I declare your dream shall not die in Jesus' name. I declare as the Lord liveth, your greatest dream, your wildest dream shall be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Your wildest dream shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Don't throw your dream into the night. Believe God. If you are a carrier of the blessing, the blessing is taking you to higher ground. It's taking you to higher ground. It's taking you to higher ground. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you notice that while Israel was still groaning and praying, but God had answered them. There's some of us here. You are still praying. You are groaning, but God has answered the prayer. They didn't know. They didn't know that God had sent the deliverer. But Moses knew he was a carrier of the blessing. He knew he had the blessing in the palace because he had the mother that taught him. Activating the power of the blessing. First steps. One. For you to activate the blessing, you must be born again. Everybody say, be born again. Everybody say, be born again. Except a man be born again. You can never, activate, you can't carry the blessing. It's when you come born again that you activate the power of the blessing. The blessing of Abraham will come upon us. Number two, to activate the blessing, you must meditate the word day and night. Say, meditate the word day and night. Tell you what, meditate the word day and night. Joshua 1 it says that this book of the word shall not depart from you. But thou shalt what? Meditate in what? Day and night. And then you will, look at it, and, and that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have what? Good success. Who is going to make your way prosperous? When you meditate the word, it is you. Because the blessing will begin to what? Operate in your life. Many of us are expecting God. No, 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 no. You see, the blessing, you have to activate the blessing. So if you don't meditate the word, you can never activate the power of the blessing. It's a blessing. And that's why the blessing comes by faith. Someone says, Blessed is he that sit not in the castle of the ungodly. One, verse one to three. Not sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God, in the word of God. And it, does he meditate how many times? Day and night. And it shall be like a tree that is planted by the river side. It shall be like, I'm bringing forth this fruit in this. His leaf will not wither. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall what? He shall prosper. It also says, it shall be like a tree he planted by the riverside. Bringing forth his fruit in season. So whether there is economic crisis, recession or not, it says, he will not wither. Whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Amen. So the blessing, meditate the word. I say meditate the word. Now let me share this. Very important. Many of us are giving. We are giving, but we are not getting the results. Because prosperity does not start with giving. It starts with meditating the word. That's what brings the blessing out. 
You must meditate the word day and night. As you meditate the word, spend time in the word, then the word is the carrier of the blessing. Number three, then obey the word. Hallelujah. If you meditate the word, then you obey the word. The Bible says you must be obedient. Those who, if you, if you, if you just do not be hearers, don't know what, but do us of the word. Do you forgive? Because the word says you should forgive people. Are you always, I mean, do you sow seed? I mean, those who do the word. Deuteronomy 28, 1. If you observe to do these things, it says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt act diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, and observe to do all his commandments, all the word, which are, then God will set you the on high above what? All nations. So, he acting to the voice, obedient to the word. And then number four, confess the word boldly. Everybody say, confess the word boldly. Everybody says, speak the word boldly. You see, the blessing is released when you speak the word, when you confess the word. When you declare, as the Lord God liveth, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Like that man prophesied to Reverend Christie, I said, you will see God when you speak the word. You see, you, you release the blessing by speaking the word. Not speaking your own word, but speaking the word. When you speak the word of God. You, have to, you see, what you don't declare, you will never receive. There's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle where? In your mouth. The blessing of God is released through speaking the word. That's, that's what activates. So when you speak the word, I wish I have time. I would show you. So when you speak the word, angels are released to carry out the answer assignments. Number five, sow seed continually. Everybody say sow seed continually. Everybody say sow seed continually. You are a carrier of the blessing. You must sow seed because there must be seed time and what? And harvest. If you don't sow seed, the blessing will manifest in your life. Sow seed continually. And then the final one, be a blessing. Everybody say, be a blessing. I say, be a blessing. You see, for you to manifest the blessing, to activate the blessing, you must what? Be a blessing. What do I mean? There's a gift in you that can be a blessing to somebody. There's something that you carry that can be a blessing. There are people in the village that doesn't have school fees. Children that are there, go and be a blessing. So when, as you bless people, God will now begin to manifest his blessing through you. Most people, you know the mistake most people are waiting? They are waiting for you to have money before you start being a blessing. That's the wrong thing. The little you have begin to be a blessing in the way you are. And then the blessing begins to manifest through you. You may not have everything, but you have something. You can show love. Pay somebody's school fees. Pay somebody hospital's bill. Give somebody a shelter. Give life to somebody. Your little way, you say, oh, you, don't, you say your cloth is old, but that cloth you are talking about, listen, some people need it. Women, listen to me. If you have not worn your clothes in six months, go and sew it out. Some of us have shoes of three years, five years. You've not worn them. They are there. They're in the house. When you go to America, you see their garage filled with many stuff. Sew it. Give it out. Give it out. Give, help somebody. Do something. Be a blessing. Everybody can be a blessing. Everybody. You say, I don't have, but there's something you have that could be a blessing. That somebody will be happy about. You see, as you be a, as you be a blessing, somebody else will be a blessing. Feed people. I mean, go out of your way. Humble yourself and be a blessing to people. Amen. I know God has spoken to you this morning. And I just want to encourage you that God will do wonderful things in your life. Don't give up. Your miracle is on the way. This year, Nigeria, things will change for this country. I want to let you know that recession will not last forever. But God will last forever. God wants to do something great for somebody listening to me this morning. Your life is going to change. Your finances will change. Your health will change. Your healing will come. This week, you will hear a good news. This week, somebody will be healed in Jesus' name. This week, somebody here will have financial breakthrough. That problem you've been going through this week, God is going to give you victory over it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, you will rejoice over your enemies. This week, you will be promoted. God of now will give you breakthrough. Victory over recession. Let me tell you something. Your case is different. God has a great plan for you. Thank you for joining us today. I just want to invite you to our services at Victory Sanctuary, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Lekki, Phase 1, Lagos, every Saturday, 9 a.m. Please join us anytime, every Saturday, 9 a.m. Also, I have a special gift for you. The first unread arises will get a special book, How to Buy Without Money. Do you know you can buy without money? Yes, it's possible. How do you buy without money? In this recession, that's what you need. Recession is going to pass very soon. But you can learn how to buy without money. It's a special gift. 
If you want to have this gift, please write to us, Better Life for City People at gmail.com. Better Life for City People at gmail.com. Write to us, write your name, your address, and we'll send you one, a free copy. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you same time next week. Remember, God wants your life to get better. See you. God bless you.